All right, good morning. Once again, good morning, everyone who's just joined in. Uh, welcome once again. Maybe let's, let's uh, bow our heads and start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you, Lord, for bringing each one of us here. Thank you, Lord, for the eager hearts that you have brought this morning. Lord, we, we look to you for your word, for an institution, Lord, that you designed. Lord, we pray that you will open our minds, our hearts. You will illuminate it with your spirit. And Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit, give us the ability to change things, Lord, in us, in our relationships, in our marriages. Thank you because you desire us, Lord, to be, um, to be unblemished, Father. And we pray that in this journey that you will empower us greatly. Thank you, Lord. I pray for each one of us here, Lord, that you will minister to them. You will be with each one of us listening and interacting. Father, that uh, your words, Lord, will, will stay in our hearts and make us alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Would uh, somebody like to uh, have a quick recap of what we did in the uh, last class? Anybody, anyone can just uh, uh, unmute themselves and a brief, maybe one or two of you, a quick recap about what we um, worked on the last time. I generally don't like calling out names. I like people. I like when people take that initiative, so I leave it to you. Anybody? Maybe one, one man and one woman. Um, we looked I hope. at. Yes, ho. Oh, sorry, Sam. Oh, Sam. Sam sorry, sorry, Sam. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I remember, uh, I remember talking about uh, spending some time on uh, the origin of marriage and uh, mm -hmm. how it was instituted by God and uh, mm -hmm. it was God's idea. Uh, so right. Remember, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Okay. Anybody would like to take off from what Sam Sam left off with? So he said it was God who designed it. Uh, we were looking at, uh, you know, God who brings man and woman together. So what were some of the perspectives, biblical perspectives that we looked at last week? Maybe two or three um, points you all could bring out. Anybody else? Yes. Sorry, Kennedy, didn't follow that. Marriage? Marriage is something sacred. Marriage is something sacred, is holy. Okay. Uh, Rupa, you you had unmuted yourself. Would you like to? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Rupa. Marriage, we uh, discussed that marriage is a good thing mm -hmm. and it is finding favor with God. Mm -hmm. And also it's an institution which have we have to honor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also talked about purity in marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. So, yeah, so some of the pointers, uh, just to reiterate what Kendi and Rupa said, we said that uh, marriage is a good thing. We spoke about uh, how marriage is a solemn covenant. We, we discussed of um, uh, how it is, it is an institution to be honored, as Rupa said. It is between one man and one woman. It's something that's uh, brought together by God. It is a union of two people, and it is a union of a man and a woman, sorry. And it is uh, a journey till death do you part, right? So that's what we, we looked into the last week. Uh, this week is, is is a very interesting one, and I and I really enjoy this topic, especially when I do meet with, uh, um, you know, when we do counseling, premarital counseling. And uh, so this is a question that I want to bring out to all the married people in this group. Okay, so before you got married, what kind of preparation did you follow, or uh, um, what did you do? Were you did you prepare yourself personally or you know did you attend uh, maybe a meeting or a seminar or, or something instituted by your church um what kind of a preparation uh, did you do 
right? So uh, it, it'd be interesting to hear. Maybe uh, so people who haven't answered, I'd love to hear from you all too. Yes? Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Apni. Uh, so, to be honest, that is something that uh, now when I'm studying about marriage and counseling, I really wonder that we actually were never counseled or, you know, it, it was never taken that way that we actually needed any kind of counseling. Only thing is what we've observed in the families, what we had uh, learned from, uh, you know, being in the families. Mm -hmm. That was the only uh, kind of training we had. Uh, so mm -hmm. we, we, no one ever sat down and, you know, even gave us anything mm -hmm. to be prepared about it. So okay. and since uh, since we were uh, since we were away, you know, we, we were not even born again. We were not even believers at that time. So mm -hmm. uh, the things that we are learning now are actually, you know, amazing. And it's, uh, you know, something very shocking as well as giving us the perspective to prepare our children for that now. But not really, ma'am. We haven't, we didn't learn anything. There was nothing that was being given to us. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Amni. I, I, in fact, I was looking for an answer. I was waiting for an answer like that because even I know in, in from the, the time that I got married, probably because of the education I was in, maybe I had a little bit more of awareness and knew that I had to plan and prepare for certain things. But um, it's only as we started, you know, working through this today, I said there's so much more more than what I thought was necessary. Anybody, anyone else? How anyone else has a different experience of how you have prepared for marriage? Anybody else? Ma'am, can I add one sentence? More? Yes, Amni. Yes. <laughs> Completing 25 years seems to be a miracle for me. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yes. Uh, anyone else? How did you prepare for marriage or, or maybe you were just pushed into marriage? I don't know if there were some of us who, you know, parents felt that was the right time, the right thing to do and just, uh, you know, found somebody and uh, sometimes that happens in the culture that we live in. So was that, was that something that people have, have gone through? Maybe one more response by somebody? Ma'am, shall I? Yes, yes, Kennedy. Was that Kennedy? Yeah, yes, Kennedy. Yeah. Yes, mine Kennedy. Was, mine was full of blunders from the word go. <laughs> because we did the opposite. We cohabited first. Instead of okay. going, then later we went to see our parents. Okay. Then we went to the church meetings. Then we had the discussion with our counselors. Then we okay. Then, uh, for the wedding. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you so much for being honest and open. Thank you. Someone else. I'm sorry. I think I missed uh, who that was. There was a lady who was speaking. Ma'am, it was Rupa. Me. Rupa. Yeah. Yes, Rupa. Go on. Go on. Uh, I was waiting on the Lord before getting married and. Uh, waiting for the person God who ordained by God for me. I never uh, mentioned I want this kind of person or that kind of person. But mm -hmm. three things I asked of the Lord. I think mm -hmm. that prayer also God has given me mm -hmm. because I asked him for uh, someone who is born again, who knows the Lord. And the secondly, I wanted someone uh, who will not ask me dowry. And the mm -hmm. third thing, I, wa I wanted someone uh, in India, uh, mm -hmm. some of the people, they have two certificates uh, in the um, corporate world or in the government, they have a certificate saying they are Hindus and uh, inside the church, they follow the faith. Mm -hmm. And when I was very young, I saw I had a friend who had that kind of uh, father who worked in the government and they had an Ambedkar photo in their house mm -hmm. and they used to come to the church also. 
that made mm. me think and i was not happy with what was happening then i took a decision in that small age that who whomever i am going to marry should be able to proclaim that he belongs to god not only in the church but in also in the society so that was the three pointers i asked god and um, i had to stand in faith for some time because my father was also not very happy he said who will marry you without dowry and and all that but god has honored and he gave me a person with that uh, commitment and but learning preparing for the marriage to to be honest i have learned i'm still learning it's a journey thank you ma'am thank you thank you rupa thank you so much okay wonderful and and i'm sure you know as we go on in this lesson you'll probably um find certain things maybe that you did maybe you didn't but i want to encourage you even as we go through this portion of preparing for marriage and making a choice um you know it's still not too late to to change yourself yes you you do not you do not change your spouse that's not it it's you change yourself it's working on certain things that may not even have occurred to you as uh, being important to deal with within marriage so for those of you who are married uh, you know it's a it's i think it's it's a great opportunity to learn about how things can be different and for those of you who aren't married i think this is um, this is something that's wonderful for you to keep yourself prepared before you enter into this institution okay so when like we had discussed the last time uh, we said that marriage is a coming together of two people and so when these two people come together what you're saying is um uh, when two people come together there are two different personalities who are coming together two different experiences two different individuals their upbringing their expectations their dreams and um even the way that they have journeyed with god right so these uh, the union of these two two people can either be you know something that's beautiful or something then that can be like like being in a boxing ring right it can be wonderful it can work together so well or it can be combative like two armies together right but if these two individuals who are coming into marriage can be more prepared can be more equipped they are ensuring that coming together is going to definitely produce something that is that is beautiful okay and because that's what the scripture really talks about you know if two are better than one so when two come together um knowing that god has made each person differently and we need to work together in order to make a good outcome or a good synergy now we need to uh, i think first of all understand that there may be very many reasons that we enter into marriage and a lot of them may be wrong reasons right it could be especially maybe in the indian culture a lot of times people get into marriage because they are being forced by their family or that they are pushed to to you know get into the next phase of their life so it's it's maybe an expectation that they are just hoping to fulfill or it can be um you know you need um, uh, you need probably someone to take care of your elderly parents or it could be just you know wanting to leave your own parental home and starting something else or it can be other reasons like um you know wanting to gratify your sexual needs the the, the very reason for why people get married is something uh that needs to be needs to be thought of because that in itself can set a marriage um you know the outcome of the marriage so being in it for for the right reasons for the reasons that god had ordained like we spoke about last week you know for those reasons is when you can expect that a marriage is in it for the for for the best okay now when we uh, when we look at uh, you know the bible uh, we we do also find certain jewish traditions 
of how marriages takes place. So you know, so if you if you've read a little bit about how Jewish marriages takes place, um, it it. It, it gives you a, a good analogy of the way um, uh, you know the, the union between Christ and and the churches and and it, that is that is the similar custom that is being played out even in in a marriage. So in the Jewish marriage, um, after uh, you know the engagement or you know the the families come together and arrange the marriage and decide that they that there will be an engagement or a betrothal. Um, there is generally a year long period of wait okay and during this wait um, they are expected to the the bride as the to be bride and the to be groom are expected to prepare themselves so what does the bride do the bride prepares herself for the groom so she keeps her chastity she keeps her purity and her devotion to her groom right so that one year it's a period of testing also and for the groom the preparation is that he goes and prepares a place, makes the uh, the place uh, the place, and and becomes responsible to bring about his bride to uh, you know to his, to his home. So um, so the, although when we're looking at this, remember, I, I, we're not advocating that this we we need to follow this tradition or custom, but we understand the depth of it, the value of it is that yes, we need to prepare ourselves for for marriage so in in uh, all people's church what we do is we do ensure that people that young people or people who are going to get married prepare themselves and we lead them through a premarital course where we take them through a sense of preparation where there are discussions that happen um, on on practical things of life on on emotional issues on past related issues that can impact the marriage what is expected of them so they go through a three to six month period of intense um, um, you know counseling and training so that you know there is a sense of equip being equipped as they enter into marriage so through this we are going to be looking at seven important areas um, on um, uh, that need to be looked into uh, with with complete understanding with complete seriousness uh, as the, as you're going to be as you're preparing for marriage so if you are following along uh, in the uh, in the in the uh, PDF. I'm on page 13. Um, I'm on page 13 of the PDF. Right. So we're going to be looking at uh, initial the two. Uh, sorry, initial um, the three areas in our first uh, class, and in our next class we'll be looking at the rest. The rest. Okay. So um, one of the most important things uh, area is uh, is to understand how we can offer the best of ourselves. All right. So, if you look at um, um, if you look into scripture in John chapter fourteen, verse two and three. If if any of you have that PDF opened uh, on page, um, I think it's page thirteen. Uh, would someone read that verse out? John fourteen two and three, becoming the best you. John fourteen two and three. Would someone kindly read that out, please? Shall I read, ma'am? Sure. Go ahead. John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am. And there you may be also. Amen. Thank you. So, if you look into this uh, into this verse, what it's showing here is how um, Jesus um, died to to bring back his bride to him. Okay, and he has gone to prepare a place for his bride. So, what and as he prepares his place, he's he is. Uh, left the Holy Spirit with us so that we can be made ready, we can be made pure and unblemished in front of Him, right? So, when what we are taking away from this passage is 
that that sense of preparation that that um, uh, sense of learning to equip ourselves or prepare ourselves to what we are supposed to be before the marriage so when we look at um, you know uh, if you were to ask any person what would you uh, what would you want for your marriage the first thing the first response you will get is a list of qualities that you want to see in your partner right but very often we don't think about what is needed within us to actually be uh, you know the partner for the person you're looking for and we of the, the focus is so much on having mr right or miss right right and while you're while you're trying to do that what is extremely important is to be able to look at yourself, to be able to see that um, what you are going to be offering in marriage is nothing, nothing can match up to that, nothing can change, nothing can substitute for that. So taking time to first of all prepare yourself, you're actually giving a wonderful gift to your spouse, to your future family um, and, and, to, and to your children. So the focus is a lot on um, what, how am I preparing myself? So becoming the best me. Because, um, like we said, when we ask God to work within us, either through His Word or by His Spirit, you know, we become more efficient and effective in everything in life and so also in marriage. So what does this becoming the best you or be best me mean? So I'd like you to look at it as a, you know, as a wheel. Okay, think of it as a wheel. And in that wheel, you know, the wheel has different spokes, right? So each portion of the wheel represents you. And when you're looking at you as a whole, there are many parts of you. There is a physical part of you, there is the emotional part of you, the intellectual part of you, the social part of you, the spiritual part of you, the financial part of you. Um, what else? What else could be there? Uh, maybe the, the, the professional part of you, right? So if you look at this wheel, if the wheel needs to run in a good balance, you know, you need to have all the spokes in, in alignment. If there is one spoke that is that is you know functioning at ten percent or is only ten percent, the wheel is going to crack, right? So when we're looking at becoming us, we're looking holistically. We're looking completely at how we can prepare ourselves. Okay. So as an exercise, you know, um, what what I want to um, maybe encourage you all to do is to uh, you know kind of draw a wheel. And in each portion, maybe label the portion of physical, social, intellectual, mental, um, financial, spiritual, and see at what optimum are you functioning. When you're looking at a zero to a hundred percent, what optimum are you functioning at? Like for example, physical, maybe you know uh, you probably need some bit of an exercise, or for the fact that you don't sleep enough, or maybe you don't eat healthy. So look at that part of you and say, what is it that needs to change? Or look at your um, maybe your financial self and say, you know, how how good a steward am I with money? Am I able to um, you know save? Am I able to invest? Am I a spendthrift? Find that out. In your spiritual self, what is your walk of God with like? How how what what time do you take with God to, to spend with Him? How much do you learn the Word? How much do you serve Him? So you know, having having that you know just just drawing that wheel, and this is what I generally make um, uh, my my young people do to you know draw that wheel and uh, begin to see because when you actually draw it, you begin to see that there are so, some areas that really need some work, and um, you know committing to do that. So. The first area is look at yourself holistically and see how is it that you can become the best person for for your partner. Okay. Uh, any questions here? Because there's so much of silence. I just want to see if everyone's awake, everyone is here. Maybe a thumbs up or a question or a smiley or a it's a thumbs up. It's a thumbs up. It thumbs up. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Tarun, for the smiley. All right. Okay. So we'll we'll look into the into the second point, the second area. The second area is our emotional health. 
Okay. Now, I cannot just specify how important this part of it is. All right. Um, when you're looking at emotional health, or uh, so, what does emotional health mean? The emotional health is the part of your um, some part of your soul. Now, I'm sure you have learned this in your last year that man is a tripartite being. We are made of body, we are made of a soul, and we are made of spirit. So, when you look at the soul, the soul has the mind, it has the will, and it has the what? This is just to see if you are aware. Spirit. Spirit. Uh, okay. The the soul has the mind, emotions. the will, and the emotions. Okay. Yes. Yes, the soul has the mind, the will, and the emotion. That's right. Okay. Now, um, you know, uh, when you're looking at a person, you cannot see very much of what is in their emotions or their attitudes or their perceptions or their thoughts. Right. The only way that you know that is in their behavior or in their speech or in their mannerisms. And um, often, that is not something that can be easily seen, unless and until, of course, you spend a little more time with people and then begin to see how do they react, how do they um, uh, relate to others, what are their, their specific attitudes. Now, unless and until that happens, you know, you, you're, not, you're not very clear of how, how that is. And scripture does does show, um, you know, through through the verses that you see on um, page thirteen, it it talks of how you know the the importance of a cheerful disposition, the importance of a cheerful heart that that uh, brings uh, that, that is that is good for the for the health of the person that that is good for for a community or good for relationships. So scripture really brings that about in a great way. Now a lot of people do get married for the sake, uh, or not for the sake, they, because they think that if they do get married, it will cure all their emotional needs and all their emotional problems. Okay. And, uh, but what, what they don't realize is that marriage can heighten or aggravate those emotional weaknesses. Okay, and like for example, there may be there may be times emotions that we, we we may not share our emotions with everyone. We think it's either a weakness or we think it's not a good thing to do. So we may not share those emotions, and we think you know maybe if I get married and I have that special person in my life, maybe I'll start to talking more. I'll start to be able to relate more, but in turn, it can be very detrimental because you're you've never trusted anyone to be able to share those emotions. And so when you come to a point of marriage, you're not going to be able to do that either. So it is important to identify and come up and face those emotional issues that you may have and begin to deal with it. OK, now, if you look at um, at the uh, at the notes, uh, there are on page um, 14, you will see that there are 17 um, different kinds of unhealthy emotions or attitudes or behaviors that is very important to, to be addressed. Okay. Um, now we are all human and we will experience one, two, or even many of these emotions. And if we are in a position to um, confront this and work on this, our relationships are going to be much better. So I'm just going to give you 10 seconds. Look into that 17 um, uh, list that's given to you. And maybe you can mark it or mentally tell yourself, OK, this is something I know affects my marriage. Or this is something that affects my general relationships. And I need to work on this as I enter into marriage. So quickly, 10 seconds. Um, you know, have a quick look at those 10, 17 uh, pointers that are there and give yourself a mental mark as to what is it that you really want to begin to change by the help of the Holy Spirit. 10 seconds.
Okay, now since you've done that, I think it's also important to state that these emotions that you, you um, probably found, if you were to recollect, you will see that these affect your behavior. These affect the way that you decide on things. These affect the way that you problem solve. Okay, so why is it important is, is because it has a relation. Our emotion impacts our behavior. And these wrong, uh, wrong behaviors can disintegrate a marriage. It can bring about further problems we don't deal with it like um, maybe maybe I'll, I'll bring up uh, bring about an example let's say um, I'll, I'll take up the fourth one that says critical and someone who's being critical and judgmental okay if if we see everything to through criticism through and through a, a very pessimistic through a very fault finding eye through a very judgmental eye yeah, and we don't recognize that that's what it is. When we are in a close um, uh, marriage or close relationship, everything that you see that does not sit well with you is brought about as a criticism, right? So you could uh, maybe something about the way they look, or something about the way they do do things, or something about the way that they are, or some the way that they speak, the language they use. Uh, you know, a sense uh, uh, there there begins to be. A uh, sense of negativity that's there around, right? Or let's say if there is jealousy, you know, um, uh, you tend to become over possessive about your spouse, do not want them to talk to anybody, they, you want them all for yourself, uh, you know, they shouldn't go to their, to their parents' house, they shouldn't meet a friend. So that affects the way that uh, you know, behavior affects the behavior, and that definitely brings about issues within the marriage. So, um, you know, the, one of the examples that scripture talks about uh, is, you know, a nagging, uh, a nagging spouse. So, if you look at Proverbs twenty-seven fifteen, it talks of, of a, how a na nagging spouse is like the drip of a leaky faucet. Right. So, it's so annoying. Right, you keep hearing that. You know, I don't know if you kept hearing, uh, you know, one drop in your bathroom that keeps going on. It's very, very annoying, right? And that it's, it it talks about how about emotional uh, issues. Now, it it just doesn't mean um, uh, just a nagging uh, wife. You know, it can be a nagging spouse. So it can be it can be any other behavior that uh, can can deter the couple from coming in together. Okay, so negative emotions or a negative attitude is something that needs to be dealt with and we will be looking at this greater um, as we as we move ahead in in another chapter where it talks about having um, uh, about our attitudes and our temperament and our behavior so we're going to be dwe dwelling a little more into what can be done okay so part of becoming one is recognizing these emotions and these attitudes and these behaviors and know that some of them are are not going to help you in in your marriage also it is to understand the way that i may um i am i react emotionally may not be the way that my spouse reacts emotionally and the more that i'm able to understand that the more i'm able to accept certain things or the more that i'm able to understand that you know my spouse works certain things this way the, the more that i'm able to respect that and to understand how we can work together and respond in situations okay so so emotional health is is a very very important part in um, in marriage because that's that's what you are you're actually relating to the soul of another not just bodily um, and not just in the spirit but also relating in the soul is there any uh, question here before I move on to the third uh, area any quick questions before I move, move on to the third area yes um, good morning madam Good morning, Abraham. Yes. So I want to know, so in case um, you, you have a spouse who has this, uh, most of these things you are talking about, is it um, a must that we accept them the way they are or we look for strategies on how to help them out? Because probably we might also need help for us to overcome these um, challenges on our own. So do we have to support each other to overcome or we just 
accept that because you are jealous, I just accept you the way you are, and then I try to live to please you. Is that something we can adjust or uh, get better from each other? Yes. Okay, so you know there is a verse. Um, in, it says in the Bible where it talks about iron sharpens iron, right? So when you are in a relationship, the way that you learn from each other is because of you know you are you are you are you are face each other and you are living together. So I, and I think it's so true that your spouse is the one who knows you the best, right? Or the people within your family are those who know you the best. And uh, if you need to grow, grow in the Lord, you need to grow as a person, what, what resources God has given you, you need the help of somebody else. So as a spouse, if you have noticed something in your, uh, in your partner that definitely requires a change, I think it's important to lovingly address that and let them know that this is something that needs a address, needs address because we are also like mirrors, you know, we reflect things. So to be able to do that is, is good because it is for the greater cause of your relationship, greater cause of the marriage and the family. So it is important for you to do that. Whether your spouse does it or not, of course, is an individual response, but I recommend that uh, you know if you are in a marriage and you do find something you know gently, lovingly, encourage them to work on it or to get the help that they want or work on it together. So I would encourage that you help one another. Yeah, thank you, madam. Thank you yeah. so much, Charles. You had a question. Yes, um, I am. I am looking at. When Jesus was talking about the speckle and logs in people's eyes, that it is easier for you to see the speckle in your spouse's eye, mm -hmm. uh, where you have logs. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in the beginning, when we were beginning the lecture, you, you said that it is not yet too late for you to change yourself, because you can't change your spouse, you change yourself. Now, um, I'm looking at the, the, the human tendency, the human character of looking at speckles in people's eyes, in, in the spouse's eyes. So now, how do you equitably balance and identify the, 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 now the logs that you have in yourself? Do you, do you ask your spouse to, to tell you the speckles they are seeing in you, which are now your logs? And then you are able to tell them the speckles you are seeing, which they are their logs. I am I'm wondering on how to handle this, especially on these vices that you have seen that might be negative in your spouse when you yourself you are not identifying them, especially mm -hmm. on areas where you find people are not ready to be corrected or rebuked. What do you do? Okay. So um, that a very good question, Charles. Um, so when uh, uh, the issue, well, I think what you're saying is how do we correct someone when there is a log in my eye, when there is a speck in the other. Now, what when, when we're looking at marriage, we're looking at a situation where one learns from another. And we're looking at uh, a union which is willing to be vulnerable to the other so much so that I can actually show all of who I am to my husband or to my to my spouse and have him correct me. Now, that is the best place, the ideal place for it to be in. However, uh, not all not all of those relationships are in those ideal spaces. Yet it is our responsibility to, to be able to, um, one, I think, okay, so maybe I'll give you an example, like um, let's say sh be, uh, being short-tempered, okay? So I may be just as short-tempered as my spouse is. And uh, maybe I have noticed that, um, you know, earlier on, maybe in my marriage, I've been really short-tempered and over time, you know, I've worked on it and, and it's getting better, but probably I'm, I'm not seeing the same in my husband or my spouse. So it is important to, first of all, own up and say that, you know, 
this this has been um, uh, an issue with me or a, or a, or a, or an emotional concern problem with me but i have begun to see that this is the way that i've worked on it and i think you know it it's helping me would you want to work in that journey walk in that journey alongside with me or you know find some someone who can lead you through with with that so it is important to do that even though you may not be perfect when you do see uh, something that affects your marriage it is important to bring it out because remember you are one what the, your your spouse does affects you what you do affects your spouse yes bring it up together and at best see how this can be worked and we are also going to be looking at conflicts and problem resolutions later but to be able to bring it up like we said if they are not willing or if they are not receptive um bring it to the lord in prayer bring it to god and ask that he brings about uh, about a change for his glory for the glory that he would want to see within within the marriage okay uh i hope i answered that i know i have two more questions may i may i uh, request that you all could wait for for uh, probably to the end of the class and then you know I, i can take up those questions christopher and charles and i think even samuel had lifted his hand right okay um so i will come back to to this or probably at the end of next session we we will spend a little more time for questions the third area is on personal management how um how is it that uh, that that i am able to work or do things for myself to keep my life in order so a very important part of this preparation is your personal management so if you look at proverbs 25 28 it says whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls okay now what does this mean is if we do not know how to manage us ourselves and the responsibilities around us um and we do not have the skills for that now that can give rise to a lot of challenges in marriage like um you know certain things are managing your time being able to be uh, being punctual to to a place knowing how to schedule um or structure your day balancing um maybe couple of things that there are together work ministry home how how is it that you balance it what have been your skills like your household skills i mean do you know how to cook do you know how to clean do you know how to make a bread sandwich um you know are are, are the beds neat uh, is is the laundry done so all of this it it is important to personally build up in those responsibilities and there are four key um areas or pointers that that we've spoken up there are a lot more but but generally i think a lot of this can fit into these four areas one is the career the other is your finances uh the third is your time and the fourth are your skills skills of household skills so when we look at career you know it's a good practice to check to see um where is it that you what is it that you want to do in your career what is it that you want to do professionally uh find out to see is there something that, uh, do you have problems in just maintaining a job do you have problems in the way that you relate to people in the job also checking to see as to um uh, you know what what kind of skills do you need to improve your your current career or or the current position that you are in is there something that you will need to do is is there a necessity to change the job and uh, is your potential coming out in the best way possible because these plans will definitely affect your marriage and it is important to discuss these things with uh, the partner with the spouse or your fiance um so that things are well known you know if you do have career plans in your head and do not share it out with uh, with your with your spouse with your partner um it can cause into trouble because they may be entering into marriage thinking that you're going to be staying in this um high paying job all the rest of your life but maybe in your mind you you've decided that okay give it 2 years and then i'm going to move into something else or i'm going to change my career path or i'm going to be getting into full time ministry so it is important to open up and and discuss these things 
Uh, so, so career is one. The second that we're looking at is finances. Finances is a very important part of, of a marriage, right? One is do, uh, as a person, do you have um, uh, a, a good understanding of how to manage your money? What is your thoughts about money? Um, uh, how, uh, and practically, a lot more practically, are you able to live within the means of your marriage? Are you able to, um, you know, uh, uh, do you have a plan? Do, are there budgets that you have? Do you do you save money? Do you invest money? Uh, are there specific goals that you have over, um, you know, a, a period of time on 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 how how much of money you would like to accumulate? Are you in debt? Um, is that is that something that uh, that that has become a a pattern. Um, also, um, as a person who's earning, do you have in your mind to support and contribute financially, maybe to your family or or to significant other people? What have your tithing practices been? Um, what what is your attitude about money when it comes in a marriage? Is there, uh, you know, I've seen a lot lot of people who come in for counseling come in with this issue. You know, this is mine. This is my bank account. This is my money, and that is his or that is hers and we don't touch each others and we don't even know what it is so what are those thoughts what are those um, uh, uh, what are some of those principles that you have when it comes to finances so that's something that is and uh, needs to be discussed about the third is of course time management how do you manage your time are you able to uh, you know, keep specific schedules. Um, do you work on 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 a time plan? Um, do you have do you uh, portion parts of the day for important things in your life, for your devotion and your time with God, for your work, for uh, for building up maybe certain relationships, for your for your health, um, for for ministry, for for building up your skills. So how do you apportion that specific specific time? Um, are you a person who kind of is able to set goals? Do you keep commitments? Do you ensure that whatever you have said you would you you have committed to is something that you would do? Um, and so so these are certain goals again that that needs to be looked into. You know so so career, finances, and time management. And lastly, of course, the household household skills. Now it is absolute necessity in our day and time to be able to know how to manage a home or how to manage uh, you know the general working of the home especially since now both men and women do work it is important to work hand in hand together and it is important for both the man and the woman to build themselves in those skills so if you are a young man or a young woman you know get going Ask the help of your your mom, your dad, your aunts, whoever, to help you to cook, to laundry, to clean, to grocery shop, to making the bed, to uh, whatever. There are so many things to, to 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 cleaning the refrigerator. There are so many things, but but get to that. And and this is important to 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 discuss because I see again uh, so many couples coming with this issue that their spouse does not help them with in household skills, in household work or chores. And, and that becomes a huge sense of a conflict between them. So being able to understand and preparing yourself so that you get ready for uh, entering into um, into marriage really helps you um, maintain a, a stable and, and a happier home. OK, now quickly, we have um, we have uh, quickly going to get into our break, but I'll take one question. And I think it was uh, Christopher who raised uh, a question last time. Christopher, would you like to bring up your question? Uh, yes. Uh, so my, my, my uh, I just, something I just wanted to add when it comes to, you know, emotional um, conflicts and emotional outbursts, uh, mm -hmm. I think one of the um, uh, Key things to 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 uh, to be aware of is um, that there can be emotional triggers. Uh, you know, certain certain um, uh, areas which are sensitive uh, mm -hmm. you know, on both on both you know both spouses mm -hmm. and uh, I mean on both husband and wife. And uh, you know, to be aware of those, and uh, to be also aware that um, those need to be managed 
some way, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going into the solution part because uh, Gene, I'm sure you will be able to cover that much more, much better. But mm -hmm. I'm more, I mean, I think, I think communication is 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 is, is very important. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, sometimes, you know, we are aware of them, but we still go, you know, we still, uh, you know, go down the path of, you know, uh, actually. Uh, Activating those uh, emotional triggers, and then that uh, you know that can be uh, that can uh, can be quite uh, emotionally quite uh, stressful. Yeah. So just something I just wanted to add. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Yes. Uh, he said emotional triggers. Yes. There can be times. Um, uh, maybe I'll, I'll give you one or two examples just to um, highlight maybe what he said. What uh, Christopher said is, let's say there is a person who has severe anxiety, and um, uh, you know, is uh, um, has been having anxiety, which has not been managed or not been dealt with. That can sometimes become a trigger for very many things, or um, uh, you know, just just and 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 it and it kind of um, uh, um, spirals. The anxiety probably becomes larger when there are certain uh, certain things like maybe you know a person who's very anxious and the spouse does not give their whereabouts when they're going on an outstation trip for maybe 10 days that can that can cause a sense of uh, you know, conflict because there is one person who seems so anxious here about the whereabouts whereas whereas the the spouse is very you know says okay you need to trust you need to know that when i'm out I, i'll be okay so like Christopher said, communication is very, very important to to tide through some of these uh, uh, some of these triggers. And, and I'd say it is good to spend more time in understanding the emotional realm of a person when you're getting just before you're getting married, because um, that's how you you do know. So. Uh, the more the, the conversation takes place, the more there are exchanges, the better you are able to see what could be some emotional problems that are there. All right? Okay. Um, we'll uh, we'll we'll end the this class right now. And um, I'm. Uh, can you just give me a minute?